Hey folks, thanks for joining us for another training video. My name is Dustin Cruz. I'm one of the content developers here at Chief Architect. And since there's been a lot of changes in the last couple releases of Chief, I thought it might be a good time now to take a dive into some more advanced material properties, discuss some of the new map options, and finally to compare and contrast how standard PBR and ray trace behave under different situations and when to use which. Okay, let's get started. So before we dive into the advanced stuff, let's do a quick breakdown of our material properties, since these attributes have been with Chief the longest. So material properties are attributes we can give to our materials that do different things. I'll break them down one by one. There's diffuse, specular, roughness, transparency, reflectivity, emissive, and translucency. And let's take a quick dive. Diffuse is just the texture. So on the left, you can see that it's got a white texture, kind of a marbly texture. On the right, there is no texture, so it's just a black sphere. Specular is how shiny something looks. Uh, there's a few caveats with that one now. Uh, if you notice on the right, it is fairly shiny. On the left, it is more of a matte finish. But on the right, even though it's shiny, you're not seeing any reflections. And we'll get to that here in a sec when we get to reflections. Roughness is the opposite of specular. So now we see that the ball on the left is shiny and the one on the right is matte. And emissive. Uh, turning on emissive makes a material appear like it's casting light. In Chief Architect, emissive materials don't actually cast light or count as a light source. They do look like they are casting lights. There's no shadows on there. It looks like that ball is lit up from the inside. Uh, you can see it in the reflection on the ball on the left, but it won't actually cast a light that you can control. It won't cast shadows. Um, it just looks like a light source. Reflectivity is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it's just how much uh, material reflects its surrounding environment. Translucency, uh, you want to think maybe lampshades or curtains. You want something where light can go through it but not actually see through it. That is a translucent surface. And so as you crank up the translucency slider, you get a more translucent material like a lampshade or a curtain. Transparency is also pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it is how transparent an object is, as you can see from the ball on the right. Uh, it does not refract light, and by refract I mean refraction. You have to use the transparent material class to get refraction, so you'll set it as a type of glass. But for just the normal generic material settings, transparency will make it more or less transparent. So just to break down what works where, uh, we have standard, PBR, and ray trace. As you can see, ray trace supports all these pretty well. Um, the yellow circle means it's circumstantial or kind of works. So reflectivity in standard kind of works. You don't get an actual reflection though. You get the, the specular highlight. So let me go back real quick. So a big part of photorealism is how light behaves when it strikes a surface. And reflectivity is one of the main aspects. It informs our eye how something feels to touch. Is it matte, smooth, prickly, that kind of thing. With standard, we aren't able to show reflections. And so we get a lower level of realism. Uh, PBR's big benefit in my eyes, is it's got uh, real-time reflections that you can see as you move your camera. So for an example, let's open up this, uh, this metal material and let's take a look. So it is a stainless steel with about 3% roughness. Um, if we move this up and down, of course, you can see that it starts to diffuse a bit more. So <clears throat> if this was in standard, let's drop this down to standard. We lose our reflectivity, which means we pretty much lose our, our metallic luster. And we can't really tell what kind of material it is. We can see, however, in this highlight right here, that it's kind of a shiny, smooth material based off of how the light is reflecting off of it. As I change the roughness, you'll see it starts to diffuse out into a, a matte material. We'll put it back. We'll go back to PBR view. And that same light is there, but also all the reflectivity. We'll reset, and we'll go up one more time with the roughness. So specular, in standard, is how we try to show that something is smooth. But unless light hits it at the correct angle, you can't really tell what's going on. So reflectivity does not really work in standard. Uh, it can kind of look like it's shiny or might reflect. But in PBR and ray trace, it will reflect. Translucency doesn't really do much in PBR or standard, but it works in ray trace. Metal we just covered. Without reflectivity, nothing looks metallic in standard view, but PBR does have reflections, so we can approximate that 
that metallic sheen. Refraction, uh, the light bending through that glass orb here. That is only in ray trace. Uh, anywhere else you put transparency, you'll get this. It won't bend the light. It'll just show you what's behind it. But ray trace will refract to varying degrees. Emissivity, you can see it in standard, PBR, and ray trace. Uh, once again, it does not cast light itself. It just looks like a light source. So it's good for light bulbs, uh, LED strip lights, screens like TVs or computer monitors, that sort of thing. And transparency works in standard and PBR and ray trace. PBR somewhat, I only say that because the transparency is really transparent. So if you have glasses or plates that are transparent, it is kind of hard to see them without the refraction that you get from ray trace. Okay, so those are the basic material properties you'll find in Chief. They've been there for a long time. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory if you just play with the sliders to see how they work. But right now we're going to jump into maps. And maps are really interesting because they are external files. They're, they're images, just like the actual texture image themselves. Uh, but they do different things, like drastically different things. Bump maps have been with Chief for a while, and so I'll touch on that. But normal maps, bump maps, AO maps, metal maps, these are all fairly new, and we can get some cool effects with them. So let's go real quick to Chief, and we'll break some down. So we're back in Chief with our wall, and we're going to test this with a metal backsplash. So these are all going to be the same thing, but this is just a staggered version of each that show the progression as we add more maps. So this is the first one. This is just the base texture. This is just the image that we're going to use for our base material. Uh, there's no roughness, there's no metal, there's no bump, no normal. So it's just an image that looks like this. I'll open it up so you can see what I mean. This is it. So usually with our older materials, we would put all the light, the highlights, the shadows, the 3D effects, all everything that we could into this one image and it would look okay, but we couldn't get any sort of 3D effects that we can get now with PBR. So we're moving on to more advanced things. We'll close this. So it doesn't look too great yet. We'll go through and we'll add the metal map to it to get that metallic sheen. So now we've got some metal. It looks kind of like a stainless steel refrigerator. We'll open that up real quick so you can see what a metal map looks like. We'll go over to properties. So with metal in the real world, something is either metallic or it's not. There's no pseudo-metallic surfaces. So we use a black and white surface where it's black, it's not metal, or it's white, it is metal. So for this example, we're going to want the kind of beige green tile to be not metal. We want that to be more of a glass, but we want all the metal around it to, to be shiny stainless steel metal. So everywhere where it's white, it's going to be metallic. Everywhere it's black, it's not. So let's go back and take a look. We'll close that. And it doesn't look much different now, but as we add more maps, you'll see see what I mean. So we'll add a roughness to it. So now we've added a bit more contrast to what our tiles are going to look like and what our metal is. And we do that with some roughness. And so you can see the, the reflection inside this area is a lot crisper than it is over here. So keep your eye right here on these windows. As I slide them in there, you can see the well-defined lines of the windows. And how we're doing that is a roughness map. And think of it the same way as you would a metal map. Let me grab this, open it up. So this is the roughness map. And all we're doing is saying where it's white, make it rougher. Where it's black, make it shinier. So we don't want it to be fully rough. We want that, that haze. But we want a little bit of a difference between the glass and the metal. We want the metal to be a little bit rougher, a little bit brushed. So we'll close that. We'll go back here and you can see once again, you get these three windows right here. As I slide, you'll see them kind of diffuse out. They'll blur out a little bit. And that's achieved with a roughness map. There's a couple different uses for it. It just kind of breaks up how light behaves. But still, we're not quite there yet. There's no 3D shape to this. We've got metal where it's supposed to be. We've got a difference in roughness with the roughness map. But now we're going to add a 3D shape effect using a normal map. And this will give us our tiles. So now we're starting to see some 
some real 3D shape. But remember, this is an illusion. This flat plane doesn't have any tiles on it. If I go back to the vector view, it's flat. There's nothing there. But we can get a good effect by using different kinds of maps to achieve different things. So now it looks like there's tiles, glass tiles wedged in here. It looks like there's creases separating these metallic tiles. If I add one more, the AO map, you'll see that it puts a little bit of shadow in the creases where it would be difficult for light to reach usually. And so with a combination of normal maps and AO maps, we can give a, a 3D effect to it. Let's go back to the normal map. Take away the AO. And we'll get nice and deep in here. You can see inside this crease, there's light. And that's fine if you're putting a direct light on it, but most of the time we're not. It's just ambient light that bounces around your house that pools in these areas. We want to make sure that it's hard to reach in there so we can decide where we want our light to go. So here's our AO map. And it's the same thing as metal. It's the same thing as roughness. It's black and white. And all we're doing is showing where the tiles are going to be, where we want the least amount of light. So wherever it's white, it gets all the ambient light it can get. All the natural ambient light in the scene gets full force. Wherever it's darker, it will reduce the amount of ambient light that goes into that area. So for the creases between tiles, for the seams, we don't want a bunch of light in there bouncing around. It just adds one more layer of realism. So when a light moves past this tile, you'll see light and shadows kind of change depending on where the light sources are coming from. So we'll run through it one more time so you can see what I mean. Texture, metal, roughness, normal, and ambient occlusion, or AO map. Okay, so let's kind of delve into normal maps a little bit because bump maps and normal maps behave the same way. So let's open this up and look at normal maps normal. So a normal map and a bump map, their only function is to tell light which way to bounce. So as light comes in and strikes the surface, if this tile was real geometry, light would bounce off these angles correctly. But because we're doing it with a material, there's no actual geometry to tell the light where to go, so we cheat it with this normal map. And depending on the color that it hits, it bounces off in different ways. So you can kind of see what I mean by there's three colors here. There's like a light green, there's a red and there's a purple. And so as light comes in, if it strikes this edge over here, it'll bounce off this way. If it strikes this green edge underneath, it'll bounce downwards. So we can get a 3D effect with a 2D image. And bump maps are the exact same thing, but they are black and white. So you get two dimensions, the up or down. With a normal map, we have three colors. So you get three dimensions. So you get a three-dimensional shape on a two-dimensional plane. And we'll do one more example just to hammer it home. We'll do a copper tile. So we know that we have a copper tile. There's our base color for the copper. We'll add the metal map to it and then it'll turn all these into a metallic sheen. But there's no 3D shape yet because there's no normal map yet. Let's add the normal right now. And that'll give us our little bevels on the side, a nice clean 3D look. And we want to add the roughness map to tell it where to be shiny and where to be rough. All right, let's see how it looks over here. So there's our original. We'll put the copper in there. So you can get a 3D effect with just 2D maps and that's all well and good, but there's a few things I want you to remember when you're messing with this stuff. There's another table, shows standard PBR and ray trace. Texture, bump, normal, AO, metal, and roughness. These are all of our maps. Bump and normal do work in standard, but again, it's kind of hard to see without reflectivity. AO does also work, but again, it, it, it's more visible than normal or bump, but it's, it's okay. Metal does not work because you don't have the metal luster in standard, but roughness also kind of works. But again, because you don't have reflection, it's kind of harder to see. So some, from some correct angles, in some correct situations, they kind of work in standard, but in PBR, they all work. And in Ray Trace, of course, they all work. So glass can also take advantage of these sorts of maps. These are glass examples pulled from the core catalog for Chief. And all this really is is a glass material, which is just a clear, transparent material that has a normal map on it. 
So you can see that you get lots of different effects as light refracts through a normal map. So just with two maps, we can get completely different types of glass. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. As always, if you have any questions or comments, don't be shy. Email me at dustin at chiefarchitect.com, and I'd be happy to help out. I look forward to seeing what you all come up with in the future, and thanks for watching.